If you're a business that sells to different types of customers, then marketing to these multiple buyer personas at the same time can feel like a challenge. Which audience should take priority and how do you connect with these different types of people on the same website? Do you have separate social channels for each audience or do you combine them all in one? Well, with some careful thought and strategy that we're gonna to cover today, you can hit all of your buyer personas where it hurts. All right, maybe not where it hurts, but you can hit them in their conversion button. If you're wondering where someone's conversion button is, I can't tell you, two reasons. Number one, it's a trade secret. And number two, we just gotta keep it safe for work. By the way, this stuff works really well for businesses that have historically been really niche selling to one type of audience, but want to branch out to sell to another audience as well. It works for B2B and B2C. We're gonna show tons of examples, let's go. All right, first up, it might sound really obvious, but we need to make sure these different personas are clearly defined. Many businesses fall into the trap of saying we sell to everyone. Makes sense, right? More people equals more audience. But it also means way more money on marketing trying to reach everyone and much less resonance with each type of customer because you're giving a really broad message. But Tim, insert massive business targets everyone. Ah, but do they really though? This Instagram post from Ikea is targeting people who grow their own food. This one is aimed at parents, and this one is aimed at foodies. Another example is booking.com. This blog post is targeting people who are really active. This one is aimed at people who enjoy nightlife while they're abroad. And this one is aimed at new parents who are just about to realize that going on holiday has just become way less fun. So both of these brands are targeting multiple audiences with different types of content suitable for each one. Now, sometimes brands can actually approach this from the other direction. They start by targeting one audience and then they realize through looking at the analytics or analyzing the sort of people that are buying their products that actually they have some separate audiences that they could be targeting as well. And let me show you an example of this. This is Easy Cooldown. They make cooling vests. You can see their photos are taken in a warehouse and they've got a rather strange assortment of people wearing these cooldown vests. We've got people doing work, we've got people doing jobs, we've got athletes, we've got cosplayers, we've got people wearing fursuits. You might look at this and think, oh, that's pretty obvious. They were making these cooling vests for people who are working on construction sites and they realized that these mascots and fursuit people were also buying these vests. Wrong, other way around. What's actually happened here, this company was making vests for mascots and costume performers and then realized that other types of people, other professions were buying the products. So they've added that target audience to their website as well in order to allow them to expand. Sometimes expanding into new audiences can be as simple as adding more marketing channels to your mix. For example, adding new social channels that maybe your core audience isn't spending much time on, but a new audience that you could target is. So the aim of this first section is really to group your customers into separate personas. Find patterns in the data of the people that are visiting your website or buying your products and group these into distinct personas. Based on the patterns you've identified, you can then create detailed profiles for each persona, including demographics, job role, responsibilities, goals and challenges, buying process, decision criteria, preferred communication channels, personality traits, and values. We have a video all about creating buyer personas like this, so link in the description for that. Next, we're gonna talk about how to market to these different audiences in one place. But before that, if you want some help with your digital marketing, the team at Exposure Ninja have a free service that can really help you generate some significant growth over the next six to 12 months. It's called the Free Website and Marketing Review. All you do is fill in a bit of information about your business and your website and the current digital marketing. Our team will then go and analyze what you've been doing up to now to get the growth that you've generated, but we'll also have a look at what your competitors are doing and where the opportunities are for you to grow further. We'll put all of this information into a 15 to 20 minute video that we send you via email. There's no charge for this service and it's completely free. So if you want to apply for the free website and marketing review, go to ExposureNinja.com forward slash review today. All right, so we've got the basics in place and we've got our different buyer personas planned out. So now we need to start thinking about the digital marketing tactics that we're gonna use to appeal and resonate to each one, starting with conversion rate optimization. Of course, one of the challenges of selling to multiple buyer personas is that your website has to appeal to all of them. It can't really turn anyone off. So we need to start with a really clear positioning statement on your website that works for everyone. 
Let's look at some examples. Monday.com is sort of project management software and a CRM. So it's got lots of different types of customer. So on the homepage, they call their software your go-to work platform. That works for their three audiences. They then have separate sections on their website that drill down into more detail with more tailored positioning statements. Accounting software Crunch sells to sole traders, small companies, and accountants. So again, three quite different audiences. So it's positioning statement on the home pages, you live life, we do the numbers. I'll be honest, it's not great and you can see the challenge that they've come into here, given that they need one statement that works for all of these audiences. Now, of course, what you then have to do is you have to direct each of your audiences to the right pages, the right places on your website. Let's look at how monday.com does this. So we've got this sort of general above the fold area, but then as you scroll down, Monday's trying to filter you through to the right information for you based on what you need this software to do. So the first way we can do this is we can just choose some of the features and this will take us directly to some information that's all about that feature. If we go further down the page though, we see these different audiences are actually sort of segmented out like this. And if we click through on any of these, we'll get a sort of a dedicated product homepage for that particular need. So this is all about the work management piece. This is for the operations people that want to use this as project management software. Whereas this section is for salespeople who want to use Monday as their CRM. So each of these sections has a different logo and a different color scheme to help visitors realize which part of the website they're in. Crunch is a lot more straight to the point. So after this sort of general section above the fold here, they just wanna get these distinct target audiences straight through to the information for them. There's two options, sole traders, limited companies. Of course, businesses in e-commerce have often been doing this for years. For example, clothing site ASOS splits out their clothing by men and women. Of course, not everyone gets this 100% right. On the Wix website, Wix is a UK-based uh, sort of home improvement site. Their page title says Wix DIY and trade home improvement products and inspiration. So we've got these two target audiences. We've got the DIY and we've got the trade. But when we get on the website, we don't see a clear differentiator. We don't see a clear distinction between these two audiences. Now they might say that this is because those audiences have the same products, but often you'll see a slightly different website layout for trade and consumers because trade often know what they want. They might have different criteria. They might search for more technical searches and they might see different pricing without the VAT, for example. I mean, if we're really gonna get into it, the URL structure isn't ideal for SEO either. They've got all their products coming off the homepage rather than putting them in the right categories. It doesn't make any sense, but anyway. <laughs> This site, Coach Accountable, is coaching software. So this is for coaches that want to work with their clients and give their clients a platform to log into. But weirdly, this page is also where the coaching clients log into. So if I'm a coaching client, my coach might send me this page to log into my coaching account with them. But the entirety of this page is aimed at coaches, not their clients. And when I land on this page, do I really wanna see that my coach has signed me up for something where they have to do less work? Is that really a benefit to me? So the action here is to review the key pages on your website and make sure that they cater to the different buyer personas that are gonna be landing on them. Have you got content on your site signposted so that these audiences can find the right pages for them as quickly as possible? Because we never want somebody on your website to get the feeling that they're in the wrong place. Then we risk them bouncing off, going back to Google or going to a competitor. So what about increasing your business's visibility with your different personas? Well, we alluded to it earlier, but content is another way that you can flag you're a good choice for different target audiences. Not only the topic of your content, but also the format and where you share or post it. Some of your buyer personas might respond best to video, either long or short form, whereas others may prefer text. And of course, the destinations that your audiences go to should define the sort of topics that you're covering and how you're approaching your brand. Let's look at a really extreme example. We all know Sesame Street. Well, Sesame Workshop has presence on LinkedIn and Instagram, but look at how they're positioning these differently. Their LinkedIn posts obviously cater to a B2B audience. So this is all about providing workshops for educators. Whereas look at their Instagram page where they're much more tailoring their content to families. Even if you're sharing the same format of content, for example, blog posts, but targeting different audiences, you may have different calls to action or different next steps that you want these audiences to take. For example, on the Airbnb site, here's a news post about a new type of stay that they're offering in St. Paul's Cathedral. 
And the call to action on this post was obviously to go and book this special stay. Whereas here's a page all about how to be an inclusive host, completely different target audience. This post isn't for people who want to book a stay. This is for hosts who want to become better hosts. So the call to action is obviously completely different. Or in this case, it's completely missing. But to be fair, this is for their existing hosts. But look at how they segment this content on their website to make sure that people don't end up in the wrong place. The stuff for hosts is all in the resource center and the community center, whereas the stuff for the consumers is all in the help center. Got it? So review your content strategy and make sure that you're producing content for each of your buyer personas in the place that they're most likely to be finding it and in the sort of format and with the right CTAs for them. Email is another great way to connect with different types of buyer and most email platforms, at least all the decent ones, will allow you to segment your audience. So whereas some businesses just have a single email thread where they send out broadcasts to the whole list each time and they don't really segment their audience, what you really want to do is actually have different email streams for different types of customer. And you can segment your audience based on the products that they buy or the pages that they visit or information that they give you in any questionnaire or order process that they fill out for you. But you can also build in a sort of choose your own story into your email streams. For example, and you've probably heard us talk about this before, but 13 times ROI in six months, so why not? In the Fabrics Galore campaign that we ran, we sent an email that allowed people to choose which things they were most interested in. When you're buying fabrics, you might be a dressmaker, you might be into quilting, you might be into furnishing. Those are completely different audiences and require completely different content. So we put an email in the sequence which straight up asked their subscribers, which of these are you most interested in? Based on which one they clicked, we then tagged them and sent them different streams that were targeted for those interests. And if you're receiving emails which are laser focused on the thing that you're most interested in, your engagement goes way up, but also your chance of unsubscribing goes way down. Nothing turns us off more than getting a whole bunch of emails that aren't particularly targeted that we're not really interested in. So takeaway, review your email automations and make sure that you have different automations set up for each of your different buyer personas. And if people are all going into one hopper, make sure that there is a way of allowing those people to move into different segments. Sometimes your target audiences might be so different that your entire brand has a different personality for each one. To illustrate this, we're going to use everyone's favorite language learning owl. If you're not into owls, by the way, that's Duolingo. Duolingo has a different personality on the different social platforms based on the target audiences they're trying to reach on each one. So for example, on TikTok, Duolingo's content is pretty unhinged. This is one of the more mild posts, but if you think about it, on TikTok, Duolingo is trying to connect with a younger audience using comedy and memes. They're trying to build a bit of a following and then they'll target that audience with ads. If we contrast this with the approach that Duolingo takes on Facebook using the meta ads, we see a completely different type of content. This is like app walkthrough content, almost like tutorial videos. And we'll see this is a pretty typical approach that they take. Now that's because on Facebook, they're gonna be targeting a much wider audience who might not get the humor of what Duolingo is posting on TikTok. Different audience, different context, different content. Now on LinkedIn, they have a different approach again. This time we're much more focused, obviously, on their business products, things like earnings. And even when they do talk about, you know, job posts and they do have a bit of the Duolingo personality that we've seen on TikTok, it's in a much safer for work style. There's no real shortcut to this bit of the process. You need to learn what your target audience responds best to and the sort of social channels that they are spending their time on and make sure that your content is tailored, not just to that audience, but what's typical on those channels. Last, but definitely not least, probably actually one of the first things, is how you do digital PR and build links for these different personas. Now you're gonna need links and you're gonna want to run digital PR campaigns to build those links to improve your ranking on Google, but they can also be an excellent source of visibility in front of your target audience 
if you know where to build those links and get those features. Let's go back to Crunch, the accounting firm. So remember that they're trying to get in front of limited companies and sole traders. So here's them being featured on an article on the GoDaddy website, which is gonna be much more focused on the sole traders, people who are buying their domains, people who are building their new website for the first time on GoDaddy. And here's Crunch being featured on this article about setting up a side hustle. So whilst they may have picked up this link accidentally, what they would hopefully have done is work out where is our sole trader audience spending their time online? What sort of topics are of most interest to them? How can we then go and reach out to the websites that are producing content on those topics to work on a collaboration or to get featured in that content. This doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have a completely different digital PR campaigns for each of these audiences. This might just be about, let's say that you're producing some data and you wanna go and get some outreach to get some coverage about this new data that you've produced. Well, you might just take a different angle on that data to reach out to these different types of publications with a different type of story. The work compiling the data hasn't changed. You're just using a different angle according to the different buyer persona you wanna get in front of. So as you can see, whilst it's a bit more work, marketing to multiple buyer personas doesn't have to be too difficult. You just need to be super clear on which personas you're targeting and then be really strategic about how you get in front of and how you resonate with those audiences. Watch this video to learn how to create great buyer personas and let me know in the comments, how many buyer personas does your business have? Until next time, see you soon.